and we'll show some of the footage of the waves. Uh, millions of people, uh, David Icke. Yeah, I mean, the question is, why is it happening? I mean, if you research this uh, conspiracy uh, for not very long, you realize that it is like um, a room of dominoes in a line, and you push one domino down, and that creates the next domino to fall. So we've had this situation in the Middle East where we've had all this uh, uh, bombing and destruction and chaos and, and catastrophe externally created by uh, the United States, NATO, Britain. And this has forced um, large numbers of people to leave. Um, and this um, wave into Europe um, has uh, of genuine people who deserve our help because of, of the situation that the West has put them in, has been joined by vast numbers of other people who are not refugees but are seeking to get into Europe. And it's being allowed to happen for this reason. And it's been long planned for this reason. They want a world government, a world central bank, world army, um, and uh, world currency, etc., and under the world government, they want these super states. They want the European Union, of course, the American Union, the Pacific Union, all these, these super states under the world government. And these super states are designed not to be countries any longer, but to be broken up into regions, subordinate regions that are easy to control. You've talked about this in relation to the United States uh, and North America, and it, it's planned for the, the world. Now, the biggest resistance to the breakup and ending of sovereignty is a sense of national identity, a sense of distinct culture. And what is happening, and has been happening for a long time, I mean, that's just before I mention this, um, it came out a few years ago that during the Blair administration, came out in in, in, in uh, 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 documents and an and insider speaking out, that they had set out to allow unfettered immigration into Britain, not to help the immigrants. They were pawns in the game, though they didn't realize it, but to, quote, change the face of humans, of uh, British society to a point where it would never go back to what it was before. Well, that's Peter that's Sutherland. Idea. He even wrote in the BBC that Europeans are bad and this is to end Europeans being homogenous for balkanization purposes. This is all connected. Now, look at Europe, um, Alex, and you'll look at a country that has um, an enormously strong sense of its culture, sense of itself, sense of its uniqueness, sense of its history, and what you're looking at is Germany. And the resistance to the end of Germany, which they want down the line, and the end of the German culture would be absolutely massive if they knew that was going on. And the idea is, not just in Germany, but that's why Germany has been really picked out in this, what's happening. Stay there. This is Keith Sir. You're absolutely on target. Amazing info, davidike.com. The new book, you can find it there. This is it. Germany runs, basically, and funds all of the EU now. The EU was always designed in their own words to implode Europe once it got control and then fold it into a larger world government. By the way, we did a historic big interview with Louis Farrakhan two days ago. We'll give you details at the bottom of the hour. Detailing when that's going to be released, it will be a big newsmaker. Um, Paracon said, quote, he's changed in the interview, too. It's 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 big. Uh, but a lot of people are really assessing, reassessing uh, things happening in the world because everybody can feel that huge change is upon us, some of it good, some of it bad. But if good people don't get involved, evil will triumph in this time of change. David Icke was getting into the fact, really deep stuff that, that's so on target from my research about why they're flooding Europe. Destroy the sovereignty of the countries. They're even telling them the soccer teams can't be named after countries anymore they, because nationalism itself is bad. Then you bring in groups to break up the country, make it all about ethnic stuff, the opposite of multiculturalism, and then annex the Middle East in the name of controlling the migrant floods and invade more countries. Now, David Icke just went over all that. What comes next after that, David Icke? Well, I think the, the other point I want to make is that um, people have been um, taken aback, not least Germans, at what Chancellor Merkel was doing. When this um, 
uh, this great flood of migrants um, began, um, she opened the doors to Germany uh, without any question, without any policy, without anything. And, and people in Germany were, were like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, what she's doing is this. Chancellor Merkel is a 100% owned and willingly owned asset of this hidden hand. And the reason that she's done what she's done um, is because the agenda demanded it. And because of that, she has... Um, acted and reacted or hasn't to uh, what has happened in the way that she has and the other point alex is um uh, again and again when you when you study how the hidden hand works it plays one group of victims or one group of stooges whatever you want to call them um against another to create the divide and rule. And they see, again, we're back to the dominoes. If this domino goes down, this domino is going to go down, and that means this will happen. If you do A, B will, will and happen. And they never want you to think like that, but in their own books, right. they admit they're rigging 20, 30, 50, 100 year plans. So break yeah. down the rest of the plan where this goes from here. Well, exactly. And, and, and so the other point uh, of, of the migration is they know that um, certain things are going to happen. Because if you get a large number of people into any other, from one culture into another, then you're going to have some very nice people and you're going to have some very unnice people. That's what happens. And, and, and as things happen, and we're seeing some of them now, um, that the hidden hand knew would happen, you're obviously going to get an angry reaction from the population, uh, the, the German population, and you're going to create uh, conflict you're going to create resentment and you're going to create um, divide and rule conflict in Europe um, between those uh, who, who are uh, coming in and those that are already there. And um, uh, some of the, the, the decent people in both groups are going to be caught up in the crossfire. And, and so the more chaos you can have, auto ab chaos, order out of chaos, and the more you can break down a sense of um, culture, a sense of unique culture, that together justifies a number of things. It justifies um, a, a police state to um, to stop the, the, the conflict. That's my next point. Let me interject chaos. this, David, I, because I want you to continue. But this is so important. It's where I was going next. There's a, they don't want us to ever think about connecting dots or dominoes because if we ever have common sense, it's it's over. They bring in the radical Muslims, they let them attack, and then they say, we're going to take your free speech away across Europe because this happened and, and arrest nationalists and arrest Le Pen in a response to them bringing them in and the same European governments backed destabilizing the Middle East and are involved. So at every level, they're doing it. And then now they bring even more groups. And as we said, when they gave them thousands of Stinger missiles a few years ago, they have articles now in the London Independent going, oh, now they have Stinger missiles from the West. But it's but then it talks about how they're fixing some of the old ones and might make them oh, work. I love that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that yeah. One. I saw as that the today. cover story for them now shooting down the airliners. I mean, they're literally running it all. Our governments are, and they never get in trouble because none of the media will point out how ridiculous it is. David Icke, sorry, I'm ranting. It's a, it, it's a script, and, you know, there are some journalists who are manipulating in full knowledge of what they're doing, but they're the minority. We're back to the program again. If you don't see how the dots connect, you don't see how the dominoes fall onto the next David. domino. You can't see that it is pre-planned and has been a uh, uh, plan to play out like this for a very, very long time. Then, And you're a journalist. All you can see is dots. You can't see pictures let me expand on that let me i've got to interrupt because it's so key you're absolutely right i got up this morning saw the headline and instantly knew that it was a cover story for the thousands of missiles and that it would talk about them repairing the ones the west gave them so they make the story about repairing them and make it look like they developed stinger missiles but then you read the third paragraph 
it admits they've given them the Stinger missiles. I mean, it, but but I didn't even need to read it. I'm so you just like you. I'm so used to their lies. I see the headline and I know what the spin's going to be. That's not being a conspiracy theorist. It's knowing how they operate. Go, go ahead, sir. Yeah, well, of course, the 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 the, the biggest problem is the. Uh the coincidence theorists, that's the worst one. <laughs> it's all a coincidence. I mean, it's, it's a head shaker. But um, we're back to the, to the lie and the truth. So um, you've got the, uh, the, the lie narrative for what's happening, and you've got to suppress the truth narrative. And this is why the man-child, who is Mark Zuckerberg, and this outrageously uh, uh, censorship-laden organization, Facebook, was caught on a live mic at the UN with who? Merkel. Chancellor Merkel, mm -hmm. um, talking about suppressing um, posts that are saying what's happening in Germany because it doesn't fit the narrative. This is the whole point. So if you're Google or your uh, your Facebook or any of these organizations who, who are all um, strands in the web, ultimately, I mean, if, if Mark Zuckerberg... Is, is the one running uh, Facebook, ultimately, then I'm, I live in a bloody igloo. Um, and, and so um, you're seeing this suppression of anything that, I mean, I'm a, many things uh, uh, censored by uh, Facebook, including a, a, a posting of a story about um, Sandy Hook. Uh, and it's because if you're challenging the official narrative, you're challenging the lie on which the transformation of society is being justified. This is what, what what's happening, and and people should realise this. If 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 it's in the mainstream, um, it's almost certainly um, a lie, even though uh, the journalists themselves might not know because they're so ignorant of what's going on. And 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 if you're being if things are being censored by Facebook, it's not out, out of. I mean, when you see some of the things that happen on social media and that are posted. The idea that it's it's to protect the sensibilities of no those. no it's key stuff it's like like when I interviewed friends. Navy SEAL families uh, like within weeks of Benghazi and, and other things when I interview key people breaking stuff it just gets censored and blocked they're they're definitely blocking key info that exposes their agenda as you just said David and it's and 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 and, and that just shows you where the power is they are terrified of the truth. And so what we need to do is keep banging it out there. That's why I, I'm, I'm going on this um, uh, world speaking tour um, starting later this year, and it's open-ended. I am going to give every fiber of my being and, and, and do everything possible in the next, well, beyond, but certainly in the next three years, because this, this is the eye of the storm. This is the high eye of the hurricane. These are the three years when we can start to make fundamental impacts upon this uh, agenda so that the house of cards that it is mm -hmm. um, will fall because it's a house of cards because a it's based on lies and, and b it's based on a programmed population once the people um, uh, start to break out of what i call phantom self and start to see beyond it start to realize it's a program and they've been programmed and their perception of everything has actually been downloaded so that they'll see the world the way that the the, the uh, agenda demands once they start to connect the dots and see that actually it's not all random, it's all connected, then the house of cards starts to fall. Because although it seems so powerful and all powerful, it ain't. Because it's I based agree. on being secret and it's based on the public being asleep. We put those two things right and the house of cards will fall. David, we've got a few minutes left here. I'm going to skip this network break because this is so important today uh, to go over all this information undoubtedly the point of emergence when the whole program starts coming out in the open has really begun in the last year it's accelerating exponentially i look at the acceleration it's going to be crazy within 10 12 14 months obviously but newtonian physics is accurate in this plane of existence that forever action there's an opposite you know and and equal a, a reaction basically and or equal and opposite reaction and so I would have never thought, you talked about decompartmentalizing police officers, military, you know, how they're a perfect example of compartmentalization, protecting their own enslavers. But particularly, as you said, people on the inside going public, in media, in government, in the military, in the police, because they really see how evil it is. And because you and I and countless others have helped decompartmentalize them, 
that's really going to give the system a problem. But then I read white papers that are public, and the globalists admit, oh, we're just going to automation and technocracy. They believe that's their holy grail, where everything's going to be robots, everything's going to be automated, everything's going to be smart meters, self-driving cars, sh uh, you know, shelf-controlled you know, guns, where you don't have a choice, and that's going to be their answers, this total robotic world that, quote, yeah. makes it all convenient, but really takes all human power away, and that's the attacks on farms and ranches and Amish and outdoor farmers markets i'm really getting to the point of it's true but we can't just be hippies we've got to have people that are on the land we've got to fight in the cities politically but we've got to work and at least support people that are on the land and support and, and vote with our money to never support big globalist operations and literally keep our children with other like-minded people uh, and understand we are in an occupied planet I mean, it's like childhood's in. I'm not saying it's aliens. I mean, that, you're saying it's interdimensional, whatever. It probably, I mean, it's just so, so obvious. It's out to destroy us. It's anti-human. Archetype, whatever. It's evil aliens want to get us. I mean, you know, I, I'm not saying that. You're saying that. The point is, is that it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. They want to abort planet Earth. They want to play God. They want everything ugly. They want to mutate every species. They might as well be, you know, whatever from the ninth dimension because they're that anti-human. The elites say they're a new species. They say they're splitting off from us. They say, I don't believe in God, but I'm about to become God, you know, if you're uh, Ray Kurzweil. This is their big conferences. I know rich billionaires, as I'm sure you do. I know powerful Hollywood people, and they've come to me. In fact, I want to look at the camera and tell the viewers this and go back to David Icke. I'm talking to billionaires, Hollywood stars. You've heard a lot of them here on air, folks. I don't make this stuff up. But I tell you the... Putin listens to the show, you know, watches, he's willing to get an interview. I tell you, Matt Drudge, listener, boom, he shows up. I mean, we don't, you know, Louis Farrakhan, huge listener. You're like, well, Louis Farrakhan, yeah, he's changing. I'm wait to see the interview. The point is, is that I talk to a lot of people, though, and they go, listen, I knew you 20 years ago or 15 years ago, and I thought some of what you're saying was true and liked you and thought you were funny. But listen, I've had elites come to me and say, if you want life extension or you want to be part of the breakaway civilization, you go along with the system and you shut up and they get scared. They go, it's all real. And the head of a major media empire or the head of a major bank will go, you're damn right. It's real. We're bringing in world government. We're going to reduce population. You better join the right team and you stay away from that Alex Jones. I mean, they kind of take the mask off and these people are scared. So, so David, I, they've gotten to the point now in Hollywood, especially because you see Kurt Russell going public and all these other people. They are going to folks and literally basically threatening their families, but then saying, or come get on the spaceship. And I'm not saying they don't say spaceship, but it's like the high tech reservation. We've got the high tech. We're going to be gods. You know, we're going to, I mean, you, you see it in the headlines. The elite are obsessed with living forever. World government. It's all out in the open now. And they're going to the, to the big culture icons that could really change things. And they're telling them. And some of these icons say, I'm not going to join you. And they go, fine. But you keep your mouth shut or we'll kill you like we killed your daddy. And I, I'm going to leave it at that point with that famous group. But, uh, I mean, this that's how hardcore this has gotten, David. Go ahead. we got six minutes till break, and we'll let you go. Thank you for the time, sir. Right. Well, um, crikey, I could talk for hours now. Um, what, what we're looking at is uh, what I've called for years now the Hunger Games Society, where you've got a tiny elite of less than 1% that um, control everything or politics, or government, or, or money, et cetera, uh, world army. And you have a, uh, a mass population that survive um, in servitude and, uh, and, and, and in deprivation and in slavery. Um, and I'm talking about people who this minute might call themselves well off and it doesn't affect me. And in between those two is the strata of the police state which is there to mercilessly, this is why they're recruiting more and more psychopaths, um, to mercil mercilessly impose the will of the less than 1% upon the mass of um, human slaves. Um, and a key part of this is the assimilation. And you've um, brought up uh, the, the topic, transhumanism. Transhumanism, if you, if you listen to people like Kurzweil, you, you, you are told that uh, transhumanism um, putting technology inside the body, what they're calling implantables, will make us superhuman. No, it won't. It will make us super robots. It will make us super subhuman. Um, and so 
what is happening, and I go into this in The Phantom Self in some detail, and the chapter I write about this, I think, is the most important chapter I've ever written in any book. Um, we're seeing what I call the totalitarian tiptoe of assimilating human minds into technology. It's uh, one major, major stepping stone to this is what is now a global addiction to smartphone technology, where we're losing, we're losing the, the young generation. To, they admit it's rewiring the brain, brain damaging. Yeah, well, exactly. I go into this in the book, and if, 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 this is absolutely what is happening. Uh, it's rewiring the brain. It's dumbing down the brain. And there's perfect peer pressure to have social friends. They've got to be on it. So the human element lures you in to the dehumanization. Yeah. It, it, but it, 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 it's an addiction. If you are um, an alcoholic, what's, what, who controls you? The alcohol. If you're a drug addict, what's, what, who's the controller? The drug. If you are an addict of technology, who controls you? The technology. That's right. This is, this is bringing the humans in and technology together. And they're caught, they, they went from smartphones and they've now gone to what they call wearables. These are the Bluetooth in the ear. These are the Google Glass. Um, and these are the, uh, the Apple Watches. And the next stage, and, and they're pushing this along faster and faster because they, they have to get this done before enough people awaken. To and by the way, down. sir, as you, you said it before, they admitted it. They admit it's to take over our consciousness. It's, it's basically a holocaust. It's basically genocide. They say humans are crap. This new merger will be God. They're announcing they're going to end our world, and we're just sitting here with our thumbs in our you-know-whats. Well, we're, we're probably on the smartphone. Well, I'm not, but a lot of people are on the smartphone while it's all happening. Um, this guy, Ray Kurzweil, uh, this Google executive who, who is the, uh, uh, the, the spokesman for Frankenstein, um, he, is, uh, he has said that not too far into what we call the future, um, that most human thinking will be done from the cloud. And what he's referring to, although he won't tell you, of course, for obvious reasons, is something I've been writing about in the books for years. That is childhood's that end. That is the MI6 uh you know writer he admitted that was an allegory for the real plan to put us into a collective computer mind where yeah, we all I'm, die and join the evermind i can't believe what a cult of freaks these are david but but that's um what we're what we're looking at is what i've been writing about for years what i call the technological sub-reality that's what he's calling the cloud it's 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 a um a a wi-fi if you like a massive wi-fi cloud a massive wi-fi technological sub-reality in the region of the planet that um, uh, humans uh, live in, which will It's a new be... dimension. It's an admitted new dimension where we can go and live in a false reality that also encroaches on the third dimension and gobbles up all of our data to cheat us and screw us and control us. It's literally a cloud of demonic locusts. <laughs> it will be doing the thinking. And the, the chapter I write in Phantom Self is called trans phantomism and i call it that because i've talked about phantom self and 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 and, and i am my name I'm, I'm my life story i'm my color i'm my race i'm my religion no your infinite awareness having that experience and it's taken even that level of the program what i call phantom self it's take it's designed to take it into a whole new level yes. of thought and perception control and so we need to get our asses in gear in 26, uh, uh, 16 rather, 17 and 18, and, and, and start to realize that this has to be the focus of our lives because... It's Friday night, almost 10 o'clock at night and we're live. You know, a lot of people on the internet who are anonymous shoot their mouths off about somebody should take action. Somebody should march on Washington. Somebody should stand up against the Catholic Church and all the pedophilia. Somebody should stand up to what happened at Penn State and all the pedophilia. Somebody ought to stand up against the tens of thousands of kids that come up missing every year and get found dead all over the country and all the world in shallow graves after Satanists and other scum torture them, rape them, and kill them. Well, I don't claim to be the biggest, toughest guy around, but I see evidence of that. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to take action. That's just who I am. You know, a few days before the election, a week or so before, 
Paul Watson, one of my trusted reporters, saw CNET News and other reports about something called spirit cooking when he got up at 3 a.m. Texas time. He's six hours ahead in the U.K., so you know, it was like you know, 10 in the morning for him. He saw it being reported that an Aleister Crowley witch, that's what she self-describes herself on Reddit, who services the elite, would have blood and semen available. And, 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 and we got the photos of her, all these people in blood and little kids are at the events and world leaders are there. And she says she's doing Aleister Crowley rituals. And I see that article go up on Drudge that morning, top story, just like a week before the election. It becomes the number one story on the internet that day. That's probably only happened to me 10 times in the last 20 years. Number one story on the internet. Happens every couple of years. I looked at it and I went and watched her own videos and her own admissions. Because I was like, man, saying somebody's a devil worshiper is pretty hardcore. I mean, this is crazy. And then it was all there. And she said in the news, oh, it's just art. But then I saw her own statements and articles she'd written where she said, no, I believe in Aleister Crowley and black magic. This is real. So I went on air and I said, I don't know what's going on with her and John Podesta going and John Podesta's brothers in Washington Post articles about naked neighborhood kids and photos on his walls and all this weird stuff. And I said, listen, hopefully this is just art. I hope it's art. And I kind of sat back for a few weeks and the election was won by Trump. Then I saw CNN, the New York Times, the Washington Post, all government organs say, look at these people including Alex Jones. They say there's a pizza place where there's devil worship going on in a basement and Hillary's doing all this stuff to kids in D.C. So I go look at it. I don't see evidence of that, but reporters are on it. People are putting out stuff, some of it true, some of it not. Now, in hindsight, I'm like, you know, we got all these thousands of emails over here dealing with really hardcore stuff, spirit cooking. Kids are going to be in hot tubs for your pleasure, you know, in New York, all this, I mean, go look, read the emails. They don't deny these are real. These are real emails in New York and L.A. and Hawaii. And, you know, Obama wants thirty or $65,000 of hot dogs next week on this, you know, that's male prostitute code word in the FBI language. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the, that's what the FBI code says. These aren't the areas I cover. So then I see the media say Alex Jones created Pizzagate. And when I said, no, I didn't, we, we covered it, and I wasn't sure about it. I thought it was a diversion on the innocent groups that sure Podesta goes to and others that, that I, I questioned. But I, I said, we're not covering this. These reports, I'm not sure these are 100% provable. I'm not, I'm not retracting it, but I am in a way, pull this down. Go focus on the emails and tell the public to look at those, not some diversion. Because I kind of picked up when the Washington Post and the New York Times, all of them said, when, no, when I was even covering it, everybody says a pizza place is doing this to kids. And I was like, we ever covered that pizza place? And I went, whoa, they're in the news diverting us from all this other big stuff. And then they picked up like blood in the water. Oh, Alex Jones is weak. He thinks we can get him on this. He, he's pulling down all these videos and he's not letting his host cover it. Because I can't prove it. I can prove Podesta's at Aleister Crowley meetings. He's in the emails. He's on the list. There's photos. They're, they're crazy enough to post online. I don't know how far it goes, but it's some dark stuff. I See, I'm not like you. I don't just cover something to hurt somebody. I want to be sure. And occasionally, we're covering other people's news. We're not the ones breaking it, but we're covering it. I'm like, whoa, we need to get back. And I even had reporters like, well, Alex... Why can't we cover this? It's pretty clear. And I said, listen, I care about you. You're a good person. Get another job. Because I can see a setup. And you want to think I want to cover stuff up? You know, I'm not against you, but just go do this on your own because I can smell where this is going. And that's what's going on. You know, I've had these people, the very folks that uh, I predicted would contact me. And it's just the same old thing. Same old story. You know, you got this big proven thing of really crazy stuff going on. They want to divert over to something. Because when I saw the Washington Post and the New York Times and CNN say, it's this pizza place, that's where it all is. It was like a bird with a broken wing or acts like, you know, a mockingbird. It's got a nest. They look, oh, I got a broken wing over here. I'm over here on the ground. Don't go by my nest. 
I'm not saying the people involved with the pizza place are even part of that. The point is the media focused on that. And, 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 the, and the internet is not perfect. It's trying to tell the truth. It runs over there and looks at that. But I, I figured that out real quick. I covered a few of our reports. Where I said, you know, this just doesn't, this doesn't smell right. And so they didn't think, oh, you know, you're not a sociopath like us. Oh, we got you. So then today I see the Infowars.com article, and I went and watched a 20-something minute video of John Podesta at a big conference going, oh, we're poor babies. The guy that had the WikiLeaks, how to give Hillary the questions beforehand and how to steal the election, how to fake the polls, it's all there. And he's like, we just don't know. We're these innocent, perfect, wonderful people. And there's these people claim Hillary was torturing kids, you know, in a pizza place or whatever. And we just, we just want relief from this. And, you know, it's all so terrible. And we got to ban fake news. And that's all this is. CNN's getting sued for admitted fake stories they put out about dead babies in hospitals, whatever. You know, all this, I don't know what's true or not. That's all what they're doing. I just know CNN lies about Trump wanting to cut taxes. And he says, I want to expose the fake media as the enemy. They go, Trump says the media is the enemy. He said fake media. I say, I'm not against gay people. I'm not anti-gay. I'm anti-gay, Stephen Colbert two nights ago. I mean, I mean, you're sitting there seeing them edit these clips. It's next level. It's next level. So here's the deal. I believe what I'm saying. I'm looking for the truth. And when I think that we're picking up on internet hype and going the wrong direction that we didn't progenitor, that we didn't create, I'll say it and tell the crew. Sometimes I do a video that I think's got a mistake in and I'll say delete that because that's a retraction. I'm trying to get the truth. I don't think Oliphantus over there, or any of those people in D.C. at that pizza place where uh, Podesta goes, even though they got weird acts there, and the people are like, we like kids, that's our preference. We're like, oh, we love kids. I don't know what the hell that is. I mean, there's a lot of weird crap going on. But let's just say, I mean, people say weird crap. And, and the fact is, I've said all that. And the fact that I'm genuine and have tried to like really, if I'm going to accuse somebody of something, i got to see them doing it, you know? They take me as the weak person. All you're doing is open yourself up to the full wrath of the American people. I mean, anybody thinks they're taking me down or anything, I mean, you're, that's when the full energy gets turned on. I'm somebody that's really looking for the truth. And uh, it makes me think, what is really going on there? That I get these threats and these letters and, you know, all the rest of it, basically bringing up things and implying things that, you know, we haven't done or you know, trying to bring us into things we've covered when they all know where this stuff came from, it came from the WikiLeaks. It came from all the weird stuff that's in there. It came from Jerry Epstein, Epstein, and the pedophile plane, and the Clintons, and the Sheiks, and it came from it came from uh, Penn State and, and 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 Sandusky, and it came from the thousand five hundred pedophiles that have been arrested in the last month, and all the weird ass crap that's going on. And I'm sorry the government's so infiltrated with all this, and I'm sorry it implicates people who may or may not be involved, but. You know, I actually thought about it today with all these threats I got and all the things they pulled and getting our sponsors and not letting us even advertise on Google and contacting people and saying, you can't be on the Internet, you know, because you put out this fake stuff about this. It made me realize, wait, we, we need to fight on this. This is where they think because we don't know what's going on. We're trying to be reasonable. They think we're weak because we're actually trying to figure out what's going on and not actually get that computer ready to go on there, not actually just making stuff up. You know, where they say, I'm a deeply racist or, you know, um, all the lies they say about us. We actually have credibility with the public. We're actually trying to get to where things are. I mean, I'm not going to get to it yet, but I've got right here all the stuff they're doing, all the stuff they're trying, all the stuff. Now I realize it's Pizzagate. And they were going to leave me alone. To the one on Joe Rogan's podcast, the number one podcast in the world. For long form podcasts, there's some short ones that are bigger, but it's the biggest for something over an hour long. About 90 million downloads a month just on iTunes. And Joe brought it up because Joe's aware of all this stuff. And we just cover what was in the news. And they basically are telling me that I need to shut up and stop covering it when I'm the one that's saying you just can't blame people at some pizza place. It's an obvious diversion. And we got distracted off onto it. So because I'm the good person. 
because I'm the one trying to actually say, no, it's what happened in New York and Hawaii and LA. They think that I'm going to roll over. No, no, no. You didn't get my, you took my kindness for weakness. I was actually trying to gauge who I was going after and telling people, no, just because Reddit and just because all these other big sites are saying this is happening, we have to vet all this like fake menus that we later proved were probably fake. So I said, remove it, retract it. Yes, I uh, retract that about ping pong pizza and all that. There's not a damn basement. I don't think Alephonis is a pedophile. I've already said all that, but it's not an apology. I'm covering this giant thing going on because of the Podestas and the stuff they're involved in in the Washington Post talking about where do deviant art? We have neighborhood kids naked with red butts paddled. The Washington Post pulled that off their archive. I didn't say that. They did. So, I've been on the air for 20 plus years. I've had stuff made up about me. Okay? I've had people say that I've got underground tunnels and that I'm doing this crap. I get it. Okay? The difference is, is that I recognize what's happening and I, I know that there are bigger things going on. And so, we try to cover the main issues. But quite frankly, one part of me is just like... You know, put me in that arena any day because once I get you to depose all the people and all the rest of it, people are scared of this information. But uh, it is the way it is. I mean, I got in this fight for a reason to fight against tyrants. I know Islamists just are raping women all over the world. It's part of their culture in Somalia. And I talk about J-Love. You want to open ours up to unvetted Somalis? Then go to Somalia because you'll get gang raped. And the media is like, he wants her to be gang raped. No, I don't. It's clearly... Oh, really? You're for us to be open to this? Why don't you go get gang raped? You would in Somalia. That's clearly what I'm saying. I'm not endorsing rape. I have daughters. What the hell are you talking about? I'm not the one. I don't have this stuff in my background. So, that's what I'm getting to here. So, I'm going to show you a few articles and go over the history of the spirit cooking, Aleister Crowley, where all this came from, and just try to explain to people that I don't have all the answers. But I mean when I say I'm searching for it. And when my own people go off covering other people's stuff, I'm all over the internet being accused of covering up for Pizzagate. Just like they said the Catholic Church wasn't raping kids. Just like they said Sandusky wasn't. I don't think anything's going on at a pizza place. The point is, is that You've got a bunch of people like Podesta coming to that that are in emails that were released by WikiLeaks and that serious black ops people are saying is connected to people that are convicted like Jerry Epstein and the Lolita Express and that island. And listen, I'm into full-grown, beautiful women. I'm not even in this world. I don't even understand this stuff. But I, with an open heart, have tried to cover all this for innocent children and for what's right. Hey guys, I'm gonna do I'm doing a live feed. Sorry. It's all right, no big deal. But I'm here on a Friday night. All I've got is that I'm genuine. Let me tell you something. If we did something or said something wrong, I'd go up there and meet with Alephonis tomorrow. I in fact Alephonis who sent me a letter, I will I will meet with you if you've got, I will come see your place, I will give a turn, I'll eat your pizza and say you're the best guy in the world. Look, there's no basement here, none of it. But I went with the number one store on the internet and covered that. And then you, you and Podesta, I'm not saying you did it, but Podesta is saying Trump did that. My conversations about Trump are, how much will the middle class love it when I cut the taxes for poor people and set the coal plants back up? Alex, is that good? Alex, I, I really plan to bring religious freedom back and let churches say whatever they want, whether they're liberal or conservative. Does that make you happy? Yes, sir, it does. Alex, I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope your wife's doing well. Little, little friendly phone calls. And that's why I did this video tonight, because now I already knew it a few days ago when I got this, but then I saw it. Podesta came out, gave a speech last night, and said, Alex Jones made up the whole Pizzagate thing because Donald Trump basically had a phone call with him. And that's just not true. That's why they're so pissed. They want to rope me into something and have me throw the president on their bus 
when our phone conversations are literally about how we're trying to turn the country back on and stuff like that. And then I realized, oh my God, I even had some people, Democrats, who not, you know, listen, you'll be all right. Just, just, you know, throw the president on the bus, <sighs> throw anybody on the bus. Good. Let's get this going. Because quite frankly, this is going to be the biggest story in the country. We're going to put a major spotlight on Sandusky and all the pedophile arrests that have happened. And just the fact that we're investigating hidden stuff like the Vatican, how they admitted that the new uh, Pope got in using blackmail. That's even one in Guardian. I actually thought about it. I was like, you know, I've been completely straight and open about this whole thing. And they came out. And they didn't know what to do about spirit cooking and Aleister Crowley and all this weird devil worshiper stuff and Podesta emails where they're like, we'll have the children in the hot tub. The pool's closed, but the hot tub will be warm and they're ready and they're, they're kids, but they're going to be really in good entertainment. You know, you read, you read thousands of pages of this. It really freaks you out. I'm not saying they did anything, but they don't want to focus on all those. They, in the Washington Post, Openly owned by the CIA now. That's gone in the news. Look it up. Google CIA and Amazon owner Jeff Bezos covering it up. It's all over the place, even mainstream news. And I'm like, oh, my God, I see this. We're here covering all these thousands of emails and not knowing what the hell they are. It's like $65,000 of succulent hot dogs. Uh, we'll have the children ready to, for your entertainment in the hot tub delivered to you for your pleasure. And you're just like, I hope this isn't what I think it is. Why did WikiLeaks release it? But it's not about WikiLeaks. See, because they've already tried to arrest Assange. It's about the free press. So they want to bring all this out, create a chilling effect to shut down the free press. And I'm just here to tell you, you want to fight, you got one. And that's why I'm doing this video tonight. Because uh, I get it. But listen, I'm not stupid. I grew up in the richest area of Dallas in Rockwall. And... I saw what you guys are up to. I thought those beautiful women, 17, 18, 20 years old, when I was like 12, 13, actually wanted me. And I thought, and I always found it, oh my God, devil worshipers again. But here's the difference. You guys recognize my strength in all of it a long time ago, and you tried to get me on board, and it didn't work, did it? Didn't work when the big networks offered me jobs. Never worked, did it? It's not going to work ever again. Never work. So, because here's the difference. I'll sit around on an iPhone with Zimmerman shooting this video. I'm not an arrogant person. I'm just somebody that stands up for what's right. And let me tell you, this Pizzagate thing goes right to the heart of everything. I mean, Joe Rogan's show was the biggest podcast in U.S. history. I've talked to him. He showed me, he sent me the numbers. He already had one of the top five podcasts for the last eight years. His show, 40 plus million downloads, it happened almost a month ago on February 2nd. I haven't talked to him in a week and a half. I haven't seen the new numbers. See, we're talking about close to Super Bowl numbers. 40 million on iTunes. 7 million on YouTube on three different channels. Google Play, all of it. Close to Super Bowl numbers. I fly to L.A. in a man cave and do a four-hour interview. Your, your power's broken. It doesn't mean you're, it's broken, that like like we're some super board coming to take over. It just means we want to like drink beer and laugh. We don't want to go, you know, do all courts other stuff. So that's my bottom line: is that Podesta? If you think I want to go for it, let's see, I'll do it. Yeah, Podesta and all these people are so scared of what's going on, and they they think that because we're trying to do a good job. We're trying to actually tell the truth that we're like hesitant. No, 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 no. We're hesitant because we're honorable people. And we don't want to sit there and magnify what Reddit or 4chan or others are saying as they're looking for the truth. I'm not blaming them either. And then you try to saddle us as some sacrificial goat as the rest of the Internet. It's not going to work. In fact, quite frankly, it's an arena I welcome. Because my listeners know that I'm being sued for investigating pedophilia and we can depose all the people involved and we can bust this whole thing wide open. Those who are guilty, those that are innocent, 
I think will be exposed. So they want this to be a test case to shut down the internet and free speech. I think it's going to be the opposite. Let's look at some of these articles. Here's our one. Pull up your chair. Pull up your chair right there. So, I mean, you know, here you got, on November 5th, Stronger Together, a Ben Garrison cartoon, okay? And, I mean, you go to it, it's, it's Aleister Crowley, Satanism. They're at the meetings. There's, like, pools of blood. There's little kids at the meetings. I mean, it's the... I mean, God, go look. You spent hours. I spent, like, an hour before Zimmerman got here. It actually made me want to throw up. I mean, it's like... Whether this is real or not, you got, like, people that are posing as dead people in pools of supposed blood, and you come, and adults scoop blood out, including top rock stars, you name it, and then they, they slurp the blood. It's not real blood, but they do it. And there's little kids in little outfits, and the kids are all totally freaked out. And this is just crazy. It's crazy. And so we're like, what's going on? They go, we got to do something. Say a pizza place did it all say they're doing it, make the media say the pizza place did it, then everybody covers the pizza place, we all go take the bait, and then we're the bad people. It's, it's all going to come out. So so here it is. They're completely freaked out. Here it is. This is uh, from the top black magic lady that admits she's into the holy occult, Abramovich, and, and who's this high priestess who it doesn't does Reddit saying... Sometimes it's real Aleister Crowley magic. But she says, oh, it doesn't exist in the news. I am so looking forward to the spirit cooking dinner at my place. Do you think we'll be able to let me know if my, your brother's, so he came to that meeting, of spirit cooking. Meanwhile, today, Podesta falsely claims Trump, Infowars, held Pizzagate conference calls. Totally no proof. And then, he just talks about all this, misrepresents it, says we're making it all up, conflates it, and then says Trump's in phone calls, you know, giving us the basically the orders. <laughs> Again, they want to come after us. They want to say Trump did this because it sounds so crazy that they're involved in this. But he's in emails with her talking about spirit coding that is admittedly Aleister Crowley. And then she has photos and videos of it all. Here you go see it because it's not if if anything it's being debunked in the mainstream media right. so in those sources of news that's right mainstream big corporate media says none of this has happened let's play a few minutes of this everything's okay let's listen to podesta his brothers in the washington post saying we have neighbors children's with their butts paddled right on our walls everything's fine but don't don't question that i'm not saying his brother did anything wrong it's just i don't have photos of this staying here uh, it's, you, you, you don't touch and feel it as much as maybe you'd imagine, but it's sinister and it's, and it's, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a kind of vile stream that's running under the ground that, uh, begins to really, I think, you know, have its effect, take its toll. And obviously, uh, the worst conspiracies and, and, and were, uh, you know, culminated, uh, in the so-called comet pizza uh, episode uh, in which uh, a guy who I know who volunteered to cook at a fundraiser for Hillary, who runs a pizzeria, you know, upscale pizzeria in uh, in Washington D.C., uh, was accused along with myself, my brother, and others of running a child sex ring out of the pizza parlor. Mainstream media have, like debunked that instantly. Uh, I, still have can't, some, I still have some questions about you, that, by the way. <laughs> but you can't get. You can't pull that back. Yep. And that ended up with a guy from North Carolina, if I remember right, yep. you know, getting a gun, driving to Washington to do a self-investigation of what was going on in the basement of the pizzeria. I don't think the pizzeria had a basement, by the way. Uh, and firing, firing his weapon in, in, you know, so for the employees there, for uh, James Alifantis, who was the uh, proprietor for right. people on the, uh, in the community, this is a horrifying episode. Sure, uh, but it's but it's very hard to pull this this stuff back. And Trump pedals it, his people pedal it, Bannon pedals it, Breitbart pedals it. Uh, you know, he still uh, calls Alex Jones and talks to him, and you know the uh, uh, info wars, info wars, conspiracy uh, theories, conspiracy theories. Sandy Hook didn't happen; it was all made up to try to take your guns away. All that stuff exists. You don't see it. You don't feel it if you're locked. We'll go back to it in a minute. 
All that stuff exists with way bigger ratings than they have. Meanwhile, Hillary funded the Islamic Jihad of the Wahhabis out of Saudi Arabia to invade more than 10 countries and kill hundreds of thousands of people and sell women to sex slavery. They're already doing that. So I say Hillary's already guilty of sex trafficking and murder and the rape of children because she's funded it all. They take that out of context on Fox News even. It's all part of the same deal. And say that I said that was the pizza place. In fact, they've even got that here. So, you know, part of me says, oh, my God, I don't want to mess with all this. You know, I got stuff going on. But part of me says, wait a minute, this is the ultimate victory. To have them, like, do I not even do a slap back to stop what they're doing? Because I've already talked to lawyers. Do I just, only lawyers know what that means. Like, this is a dream. Because regardless, we get into everything David Brock's doing, everything his people are doing, all of it. And the spirit cooking, the emails. I mean, it's, it's like crazy that they're doing this. But I think it's because I was trying to actually figure out who was in it and who wasn't that I was like a good guy. That they just, because a lot of them aren't like that. They're not like, oh, let's, like I said, day one, these emails are crazy. Talking about deliver kids to the hot tub for your pleasure and everything. And, you know, we're going to have all these code words for pedophilia, according to the FBI. And their own manuals have been confirmed. I was like literally saying, hey, there's all these tens of thousands of emails. There's some innocent people here. We should watch out. I mean, maybe Podesta's one. Maybe Hillary's. Maybe Bill. Maybe, maybe, uh, Terry Epstein. Maybe he's innocent other than this pedophile plane, the conviction, and the pedophile Alan and Clinton on the plane 20 something times. I mean, maybe they're really good people. The point is, is that they just can't help themselves. They just can't help themselves in that. They have all these internet people and 4chan, everybody that, you know, and Reddit that dug all this up, whether it's all right or all wrong, or whether it's a mix of that, they just see me as the big, big Christmas turkey. And I just realized my whole life's been about that. It's all been about honesty. In fact, I even think my bravado will make them come after me, which at a sick level, it's like, it's like moths to a flame. Because I got stuff going on. I've kind of moved on from this because it's hard to focus on, you know. But it's just like, God, I'm the biggest guy saying, this is probably a diversion on the Comet Ping Pong and Alephanis, maybe because I'm the nice guy and the one that, you know, gets all the comments and all the rest of it. You know, right here, I just, you know, I, I went and looked at all the cases. There's no malice of thought, thought. there's no nothing. There's uh, Alifana saying he got record business after, and everybody loves him, but he's mortally damaged, according to the letter I got. Then I've got the D.C. law, I've got the federal law, I've got the Texas law, and I just look at it and they go, no, this is your goodwill be manipulated. So I think kindness for weakness. Can you imagine me on the air? America is so enraged that I don't say that everybody involved in Pizzagate is a demon. When you go on the internet and like most of the sites are, I'm covering it up and then I'm the one that's attacked for it. All over the news. Colbert two nights ago, CNN last night. God almighty. I hope this stuff isn't true. But then I realize as long as I'm true, I can't lose. And that's what feels good. When I'm driving eight miles an hour down the highway, do I fear anything? No, I'm just driving between cars. But let's, let me, let's look at some of this. Let's, let me, let's finish this clip. Back it up a little bit. Here we go. This is a uh, former Hillary head who was in the emails about stealing the election and having fake polls and taking over the, you know, creating racial division and sending people to riot at Trump rallies. He's a nice person. Here you are. Trump pedals it. His people pedal it. Bannon pedals it. Breitbart pedals it. Uh, you know, he still uh, calls Alex Jones and talks to him and, you know, the uh, uh, Infowars. Info wars, conspiracy uh, theories. Conspiracy theories. Sandy Hook didn't happen. It was all made up to try to take your guns away. All that stuff exists. You don't see it. You don't feel it if you're largely. 
Oh, all that exists. No one wants our guns. They haven't banned them in all these cities of the U.S. They haven't banned guns in Europe. They admit they want to ban our guns, but it's just crazy. It's Pizzagate. Like, nothing's happening at a pizza place. Okay, fine, we agree. But no one wants your guns either. I'm going to see how that works. No one wants, nobody wants world government. Nobody wants big corporations to run things without your, you know. They had Glenn Beck come out today and say, I think it's horrible to have nationalism or to have American jobs. That's dangerous. Look it up. He said that. That's how crazy we've gotten. So let's go back. In reality and in a mainstream media world. Uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, undermining our democracy. and that It's undermining their false reality they've created. It's undermining this facade. It's undermining the fraud. Doesn't mean I have all the answers or Podesta does. You're not believing me or him now. And that's what's beautiful. You're thinking for yourself. You're conscious while you watch this. Let's go back largely living in reality and in a mainstream media world. Uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, undermining our democracy. And I think that the companies themselves, they've taken some steps. They have a lot of responsibility. Companies like Facebook. Are you, companies uh, like Facebook, Google, et cetera. Right. Uh, to do what they can uh, to uh, essentially not enhance this. Not so that's what's happening in AdRoll as part of uh, Google's subsidiary. We're on there three years. It helps fund our operation. We advertise our products there to fund our message. And you say, oh, you're fake news. We got some secret letter or somebody's planning something. So you don't exist now. Your free speech is shut down. To protect this, because Podesta's at spirit cooking deals with the high priestess of Aleister Crowley with bloodbaths. I mean, go look it up. I'm not saying there's anything illegal there, but you put that out on the Internet. What do you think? And then it's in WikiLeaks. And we cover it, as I'm about to show you, after PC World and everybody else covers it. But see, they want to pick us because we're seen as alternative media. Oh, they did this. Whether it's true or not, you know, we're hearing about Bill Cosby raping women with drugging them. With uh, whatever, lewds or what are they called? Quaaludes. Quaaludes, yeah. Okay, I don't know if it's true or not. It's on the news. I cover it. I, I don't, don't go, you know, don't go after the people that actually said it. Make it about us. And, and, and a jury will get all that. And we'll get all the depositions. But it just, it's like, I get upset by somebody who it's God's plan. It's because they want to come after me because we're promoting Americana. That's why they hate us. And they want to blame us that all this stuff leaked out, whether it's true or not. And they're saying Trump's on the phone telling us all this. None of it's true. Like I say, I'm not anti-gay. Gay anti-gay. Colbert, two nights ago. Trump says, I'm against the fake news media. I'm against the news. Trump's like, whoa, the CPAC speech today. This is the, de this is the deception. And, and these people think, oh, look, you're weak. You're saying you're deceiving. I really said this because we're being nice. You know, the public already left you. But the public wants us to cover this. Does the public have any idea how dangerous it is? They have any idea we had $3.3 million in 2016? You're like, oh, God, what do you got a Bentley? No, $3.3 million to have 50-plus crew members, to have a studio, to pay people. To, it was money to pay for things. And you want us to do more. We're, we're covering up the Pizzagate. And I'm getting notice of what they're going to do because I'm covering it. See? It's a war. I'm never going to give up. But you need to understand, we're the big enchilada. You claim you want to fight tyranny. You claim you want to march on Washington. We just put a president in who's got the whole global elite against him. You want reality? Go to InfoWarsStore.com and buy the products. You need colloidal silver. You need super mail. You need the bone broth turmeric formula. This is the best stuff out there. These are super nutrients. You need to filter your water with the Alexa Pure and Pro Pure and other high quality gravity filters. You want to see the water table? 
If you need non-GMO heirloom seeds, you need Hillary for President 2017 shirts made in America. You need lowers for M14s. I mean, people always think like in the establishment that they can intimidate me or try to buy me off. Do they not know my 25-year history? And I'm not shooting my mouth off here, but I mean, you're not dealing with Tinkerbell here. <laughs> You can have a gun to my head and tell me to sell out America or for humanity. I'd say pull that trigger. I just want to be following the spirit and do it just right. Because I just am tuned in and I want to do everything right because I'm God-fearing. Because I'm tuned in to God, see? And so I'm, it's not like God's even trying to any fear. It's like God's so big and so powerful and so beautiful. I'm, I'm so humble. I don't take the fear in my eyes for you. It's like I've seen these movies and stuff where somebody's going like this, and they think everybody's scared of them, and then the person looks behind them and sees what's there, what's looming behind. Truth is, as long as I'm a just person and try to be good and humble myself, that's the most important thing. I'm, I'm not going to have problems, but these people involved in all this, good God. A whole universe of truth. Why do they resonate to such lies? And you look at all these minions of the system, they are these empty, pathetic husks. They were the people that would serve evil. They were the people that would do anything against their own species. Uh, to create uh, uh, a, uh, you know, ecosystem where the fake news is, is uh, it rose up. Uh, somebody did a I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on who, on who did it, but they looked at the um, uh, Facebook traffic of the 20 top, um, I think BuzzFeed did it, yeah, yeah. Uh, the 20 top political stories in... He can't stand it. He can hardly talk. Oh, by the way, I saw some commenter. Oh, the beer is talking. I've had no beer. I've had one glass of wine with dinner by an hour ago. I'm exhausted. I've been up since 5.45. I sent kids to school. I made them breakfast. I went. I did work. I worked till 7 o'clock tonight. I'm here. And it felt like I had... I love how how I'm here talking to you real. And you just disregard everything I said. Let's say I was drunk as a skunk, which I'm not. And you then say my true humanity to you is some piss. Because that makes you feel big. See, don't, don't talk about what I said. Don't ever do that. Just make some comments. See, make some comment to make you feel good. And time to pull a plug, Alex. Time to go away. No, I'm not going to pull a plug. This is real. This is my soul exhausted, trying to give power to the species, trying to do like my ancestors did and push us forward. Let's go back. Mainstream media and the 20 top fake news stories right. that were completely debunked and found that the likes and shares of the fake news exceeded by 20 percent the the mainstream news so he says they were debunked like obamacare is free uh, or you didn't build your business or you know obama opens the borders for globalism they're completely debunked but they get more shares but they're doing a good job now to suppress that and alex Jones said bad stuff and trump told him to do it so we're going to get rid of look this is the elite's main brain <laughs> And Nancy Pelosi, George W. Bush, he is the same press conference. He do bad things. And and and, and next he wants to go, yeah, he invade Korea with Putin. I'm pathetic that I'm ruled by these people who go to devil worship meetings with top U.S. head of Aleister Crowley events, whether with pools of blood and their kids are like, oh, it's only strawberry flavored. I don't take my kids to things where naked bodies are in pools of strawberry flavor. Let me show you. But don't okay, get he he don't put that the vaccine water. I mean, look at him. Watch him play those hands. Uh, so you know that's that's a. A uh, trend that I think we're now seeing played out in Europe, uh, in the U.S. It's undermining our democracy. It's undermining those democracies. Right. And uh, the Russians know how to play this game. So they did it with, 
they they intervene directly by you know the use of of bot farms etc and uh i think that i'm not a you know i'm they use bot farms they did soros spent hundreds of millions with fake bots the vatican with its pedophile ruler all the Chinese chinese everybody said america can't have trump you can't have your own jobs I mean, back was the day. You can't have nationalism. That's frightening. A country? Jesus! Trump says we should have a country. God, this is incredible. Only thing, one, only thing worse than having a country is pedophilia, right? I mean, that's where these people are. The Russians did it from Le Pen to whatever. Nationalism's rising. It's the fault of the nationalist. Let's go back to Podesta. I don't know um, uh, ex what technical fix I'm asking for, but I think the companies really need to take this seriously. It's, it's a rather extraordinary thing, I'll ask. Yeah, the companies need to take this seriously. You know, I'm at the Alice Crowley meeting, and it's in WikiLeaks, the kids are coming to the hot tub, and there's $65,000 in hot dogs. If you're white, you don't know what it's like to be poor. Another quote from... You know, Bernie Sanders. I mean, what the hell? Who are these people? Putin invaded Korea. Bush is the president. You don't know what it's like to be poor if you're white. And no wonder they project on us we get all this. I mean, if I was at Aleister Crowley meetings with people in buckets of blood and goat heads, my listeners would destroy me. But see, it's just them. It's just, as long as he talks like this, I'm like, kill me. Ooh, I'm Podesta. It's okay. So what if they're at the pizza place going, you know, they like kids, and that's their preference on video. Hey, it's all right, huh? Don't look into it. Everything's all right, right? I did all this over these years, but now that they're threatening me, I'm so scared right now. Let's go back to Podesta. It was flipping through, you know, Roger Stone, who is a, a yeah. famous dirty trickster and has been, was trying. Oh, Roger Stone. He's a dirty trickster. Because we said it. I thought Roger like two and a half years. Everything he told me came true. He helped get all the demographics together to help Trump win. So they're pissed at him like, we know Roger Stone. Whoever they're afraid of, they mention. Alex Jones, don't get near him, Trump. Roger Stone, too. Don't get clicked. Anybody that sees them, then they don't like. Here we go. Political consigliere for 25 years and was an outside advisor on this campaign, has written a book about the campaign. And one of the first things he says in the first couple pages, just for those who think that this is a left-wing uh, accusation. He, one of the first things he says is one of the great geniuses of Donald Trump was his relationship with sites like Breitbart and Infowars, which is, I mean, Breitbart is a right wing white nationalist site. It's one thing, but Infowars is a crazy white nationalist. Breitbart was took over by Bannon. Bannon was like a liberal union guy until he found out they were selling jobs out. He's so pissed. He wants to make everybody, including minorities, so rich. He's his own his writings that they don't love collectivism. He loves Cuban Americans, you name it. Loves black Americans. They just say, no proof. If I said somebody was a white nationalist, I would show you. The Democratic Party was, but they don't show that. And Infowars, and we're so crazy, and we're so bad. Because we've got 50, 60 million viewers and listeners a week, dumbass. Of course Trump dials into that. But he wants prosperity. He wants a better deal for everybody. So, there you go. It's like, we're looking at Spirit Cooking, we're looking at New York, we're looking at all this weird Podesta emails, kids in hot tubs. What do you do? You have the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN go, here's a pizza place they think devil worship said and Hillary's killing kids. We go, let's look. Well, we don't really see that. There's some weirdness, but, you know, you know oh, my God, a piece of place. You just attacked us. And they're so pissed. I derailed that narrative. Here we go. But imagine deposing John Podesta. Person site and that has theories of all kinds of um, nuttiness, like really pushed a comic like pizza Sand, thing, like, Sand, like yes, the pizza thing and, and Sandy Hook didn't happen, right? And a variety of other things, and he boasts about the fact that this was one of the keys to Trump winning was that he found these alternative 
quote, news outlets that he established a great bond with. Um, and that's, you know, someone who's, who was very happy that Donald Trump is elected president and thinks that's wonderful. Well, you know, I think you also have to reflect on, on your own business and, and the way the mainstream media handled uh, the hack. I know you're going to have uh, others join us. Yeah. But um, handle the that. hack. It's not about them saying, screw America, keep people poor, keep them down there. Screw everybody. Not all the spirit cooking down the worst. We all blood. There's plenty of blood there. It's not about the hell of blood. It's about they handled the hack. You know, media didn't do a good enough job. Uh, you understand how it works? And Facebook, you need to stop. The, they don't get free speech. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Let's go back. When CNN told their viewers that you're not allowed to look at the wiki. CNN sent Cuomo who said that your young daughter should be in a shower with naked men. Yeah. She's a homophobe if she doesn't want to. Just look at the Arab Spring. Exactly. They said, what they said? They said, yeah, uh, everything you're learning about this, you're learning through us. Obviously, it's you, see, you can only media. learn about yeah. about WikiLeaks through CNN. If you see it online, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if your daughter doesn't like seeing a man in her shower, she's a bad person. It's not called pedophilia now. It's called liberal. On CNN yesterday, see? It's so liberal that I was saying so it's okay. Let's go back. Question, really, in the technical community that this was being done by the Russians, that they provided the information to Assange, that uh, even... I I'm winning was that... He Let's back this up. Hold on. I gotta make a point. Yes, Putin. What do I say? Infowars.com. We're under, we're under attack financially. The globe is trying to shut us down. We're the tip of the spear. Infowars.com, big specials running this weekend. They banned us off Google advertising, which is total Nazi Germany, and people should support us. Thank you, Putin. Sorry. I oh. Pedophilia is well known to be covered up at Penn State, the Vatican, so many places. It uses a control system, and the public can't believe it because they're not involved in it, but we should expose it. Because that will bring down their whole system, like Trump's trying to do right now. Thank you, Putin. You'll want to get up at 7.30 and make the kids eggs and biscuits and bacon. Thank you, Putin. Truth is, I wasn't talking to Putin. Actually, Maxine Waters said Putin gave Hillary the term crooked Hillary. And the swamp, yes. Trump never came up with the DC being a swamp or Hillary being rugged. Putin, Putin. He runs everything, all over the world. People want out of globalism because of Putin. No, because it's a big corporate above the law screw job. And the first world doesn't want to be third world slaves under an IMF World Bank control system. We've already seen what you've done. You think you're God at Facebook and Google. Zuckerberg says his users are dumb fucks. We don't buy it. Let's finish up with the clip. These alternative, quote, news outlets that he established a great bond with. Quote, news. Quote, quote, that said Trump would win in internal polls. That some here, I'm talking like this. Oh, my God. So oh, my um, and that's, you know, someone who's, who was very happy that Donald Trump is elected president and thinks that's wonderful. Well, you know, I think you also have to reflect on, on your own business and, and the way the mainstream media handled uh, the hack. I know you're going to have uh, others join us. Yeah. But um, I think there was no question really in the technical community that this was being done by the Russians, that they provided the information. No proof. No, nothing. Everyone's a Russian spy. They just can't be saying no question in the te technical community. The globalists have hijacked America, foreign corporations. They're running rampant, breaking up our families. And the Russians who've already kicked them out, thank God. God, if we fall, at least the Russians will be there. They're not perfect, but at least they're not, you know, teaching kids all the stuff they're doing. I mean, look, 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 look at like Homo set out, let trannies in the bathroom with your little kid or you're, you're a bad person. Well, that's called pedophilia. You're promoting pedophilia, in my view.
but it's like it's a creepy guy Podesta who's got weird hands. You know, he's here. It's everything's okay. Here we go. Assange, that uh, even I think if you look at the uh, the public publicity or the uh, for uh, th this form itself, it's like someone leaked the emails, right, as John a, Podesta's emails. As opposed to, to someone Assange. stole it. As stole opposed to the stole Russian property. intelligence stole the emails right. and we're in cahoots with Assange. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so I love the fact, how about the Russians made up the emails? Let me be a better liar for you. No, no, you admit they're your real emails. So the Russians stole them and exposed your at Aleister Crowley events. With pools of blood, with little kids there. Standing there all freaked out while Hollywood stars are there with pools of blood and bodies in them. And goat heads with blood everywhere. So it's 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 not did the Russians make that up? No, you defended her as your high priestess. We know who she is, by the way. Um, so does well, some certain people. It said weaponize the weaponize the contents of them. So the mainstream media, I think, had a real hard time getting to the bottom of that of of both what the Russians were doing and and whatever connections there were between the Trump campaign and. So so no connection to the Trump campaign proven, but the Russians did it. If I don't like uh, Aleister Crowley ritual and little kids and blood baths and you know there's plenty of blood in the seam of the night. Please come, Mr. Podesta. It's the Russians. Like like. If you don't wipe your butt at night, Podesta, it's the Russians. If you fall on a banana pill, it's the Russians. So no discussion of what's in the emails. He doesn't deny those. So he knows U.S. intelligence released them. U.S. intelligence with the whole NSA system you thought was for us, but they sat there and watched you and were like, we feel like devils being part of you. So the fact that you're so arrogant like every other mental patient, you're going to keep pushing only shows how big we're going to win. Here, let's go back to Podesta. And what was going on on the outside? That, I, you, and you triggered I that. I, and I, I will stop. You triggered that yeah. because Roger Stone was the first person to say that something's coming and it's coming from WikiLeaks. John Podesta, which again leads back to the... Oh, my God. Roger Stone said he heard WikiLeaks was about to release something. He's the big Trump agent. Forget all that's in it. Roger Stone. So Roger Stone said... You know, they're doing bad things and it's going to be gone. Well, forget what they did. Roger Stone, who they're obsessed with. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. In fact, I haven't even called him. I should try to call Roger Stone. My phone's out there. I should probably call him on the phone to see what he wants to do, like with the Facebook mentions here in a mention. But uh, here we go. Oh, look, WikiLeaks. Spirit cooking tweet gets Twitter bowling, boiling. Same day we covered it. With all the weird crap in there about the rest. Of, oh, look, she said at an event that Aleister Crowley, high priestess, spirit cooking, Clinton campaign chairman, practices bizarre occult ritual. It's a fact. So, what do you do when this is going on? You have CNBC, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, all of them. Come out and say, Alex Jones says that this pizza place, all this is going on. We go, well, let's look at that. We look at it. Well, it looks pretty weird, but we don't know. Oh, my God, Alex Jones says all this is going on. And then my own supporters go, oh, you're covering up Pizzagate because they diverted us off. So let's have that big discussion right now. Go read the emails for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. They are legion. And see it for yourself. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. It's Friday night. It's uh, past ten o'clock. It's like ten forty. I've done what I can, and as long as I tell the truth as best as I know it, that's all I can do. But uh, Republican Party is a bunch of scum at the top. Democratic Party, a bunch of scum. They're all just animals that think they rule you and your family. All I'm trying to do is get people thinking for.